What's up, future respiratory therapist gang? How you guys doing? I just got out of clinic. I got home. I decided to do a video, and I got a question here from Shad Jamal, who wants to talk about the variables in pressure control ventilation. So we're talking about pressure control ventilation. This is when you set a pressure, and you get a varying tidal volume to mechanically ventilate your patient. Okay, so we're going to talk to this. I'm going to try to clarify this so that you guys understand it. The first thing in understanding what varies, so your variables, they depend on your settings. So what is set versus what varies, okay? So we're going to break it down like this. When we go into PCV, we have several things we set and several things that vary, okay? So we have set and we have varies. Okay, so here we go. Let's talk about our set settings first. These are things that are not going to change with each mechanical breath. So when you go into pressure control ventilation, you have a set PIP. Now this can be, on different ventilators, this can be set multiple different ways. Or not set, but it can be called multiple different things. It's called peak inspiratory pressure. It can be called just inspiratory pressure. It can be called delta P. So you need to understand what you're setting, okay? The delta P, the inspiratory pressure, the peak inspiratory pressure, those all mean the same thing. You're going to set the pressure that you want to happen. Now, there is a slight change here because if you do delta P versus PIP, you need to ask yourself on the vent that you're working with, and you just have to know your vent, is this delta P on top of PEEP? Or does the vent cut off at that PIP? So if you set a peak inspiratory pressure of 20 on your PIP, but you're set on a PEEP of 12, then you only have a delta P of 8. Or does your vent add 20 on top of that PEEP? That's something that you have to know and you have to ask regarding your mechanical ventilator because it varies per ventilator, okay? So I wanna clarify that first of all. Now I'm gonna take that off because I don't want that to confuse anybody from now on, okay? So the other thing we set is eye time. This eye time is your cycle. So you tell the ventilator to raise peak inspiratory pressure to whatever it is and to hold it for X amount of seconds. It may be 0.8 seconds, it might be two seconds. It doesn't matter what you said it is. It matters that you understand that that is your cycle. That is the mechanism that is going to end inspiration. It is not PIP. Peak inspiratory pressure does not end inspiration. The vent raises pressure, holds it, and then cuts off when the set eye time is set. Why? Because it's a setting. It's set. And it becomes your eye time. So be aware of that. Okay. Now the next three things we, we set obviously are respiratory rate. This tells the vent how often to give a breath. If you set the vent on a respiratory rate of 10, then it's going to give the set peak inspiratory pressure and hold it for the set eye time however often you tell it to. So if you put it on 6, that's, that's a bad example. Let's go 10. Let's say you have a respiratory rate set of 10. Then that means every 6 seconds. Well, where would you get 6 seconds from, Joe? Well, if your respiratory rate is, is 10, 60 seconds divided by 10 breaths a minute equals a breath every 6 seconds. That actually sets your total cycle time. Now, this may vary if your patient is breathing above the set rate. Depends on if you're in AC or SIMV. That's another video for another time. But you will set the respiratory rate, and that tells the vet how often to give a breath. Okay? Oh, let me take this 10 off also. Now, other than that, we're going to set PEEP, and we're going to set FIO2. These are your settings for pressure control ventilation, specifically in assist control mode. Now, if you go into SIMV, then you will probably have an option, or you will have an option also, to set pressure support, okay? But that's just to alter the spontaneous breaths. 
This is what you're getting from the machine. A set pip for the set I time at the set rate on top of a set peep delivering the set F file two. These are your settings. These do not vary. Your machine will give, if the patient is not breathing at all, this is what your vent will do. Okay, now, when we say that, what varies? Well, we know that tidal volume varies. VT stands for tidal volume. Now, let this soak in. Why does my tidal volume vary? Well, if your pip goes up, then your tidal volume will go up. If your pip goes down, your tidal volume goes down. So if you increase your pip, your tidal volume will increase. If you decrease your pip, your tidal volume will decrease. That's not the only thing, though, that will affect tidal volume. So we're going to come back and talk about that in a little bit. Okay? So we've talked about tidal volume. Um, the other thing that will vary is your E time. Now, your E time will vary on the fact if your patient is breathing above the set rate or not. If they're not breathing at all, then your E time, I still call it a variable that varies, but it will become set also if your patient isn't breathing. Now, how do we know what our E time is? Well, remember, I told you if you're still on a respiratory rate of 10, then 60 divided by 10 equals 6 seconds. And that's your total cycle time. Now, if you have an I time set of one second, then that means from this six seconds, one is inspiratory, which means five is expiratory time. So your expiratory time depends on what your I time is set on in conjunction with what your total cycle time is. If your total cycle time gets smaller because your rate goes up, then your E time gets smaller. The vent will do nothing different. It won't say, oh, wait a second, my E time's not long enough. The vent doesn't care. The vent's told to do this. So it will give the pressure at the set I time. Doesn't care what the E time is. So E time will vary based off of respiratory rate. If, the pa if you're an AC and the patient is triggering above at a rate of 20, then your total cycle time becomes three seconds. And your expiratory time becomes two because one of this three seconds is inspiratory time. That's important to understand. Okay, so E time will vary based off rate, based off of patient triggering, based off of what you set your eye time at, okay? I'm going to erase this so I have more room. Now, the other thing that is going to vary is your minute ventilation, your VE. Now, this makes sense. If your tidal volume varies, then your minute ventilation varies. If, if your tidal volumes start to go down, which we'll talk about in a minute. I told you we're going to get there. I promise you. Then your minute ventilation is going to go down. If your tidal volume start to go up, then your minute ventilation is going to go up. So minute ventilation is important. And then the last thing that varies on this is mean airway pressure. Typically in pressure control, you can generate a greater amount of mean airway pressure. Now the question is why? Why can I get more mean airway pressure in pressure control than what I get in volume control? And it comes down to this. I'm going to erase all of this. I think you guys have all of this, so I'm going to erase it. This all comes back to understanding our waveforms. If this is a pressure waveform, and we're on a, let's say we're on a peep of eight, and we're delivering volume control. This is volume control ventilation. We got a peep of eight. We got a breath that comes up. The set tidal volume is delivered. Breath comes down. Expiratory happens, right? This is volume control. Now, when we give a breath in pressure control, what we typically do is give a longer eye time, and we hold... We hold that pressure 
for a longer amount of time. You know what? I'm not even going to go higher. I'm just going to go straight even with it. This is our pressure control. Now, all of this region in here is increased mean airway pressure, meaning you are holding the alveoli open for longer and you are increasing mean airway pressure. Now, mean airway pressure, write this down. Increase in mean airway pressure equals increase in alveolar recruitment. I shorten that. Alveolar recruitment. Now, how does it do that? It does that through the pores, the pores of cone and the canals of Lambert. So you have a greater amount of alveolar recruitment. A greater amount of alveolar recruitment leads to an increase in FRC, meaning you have a greater amount of functional residual alveoli. You have, a, you have more functional alveoli, which that increases oxygenation. Doesn't increase FIO2, but it increases the efficiency of the set FIO2, which leads to a greater arterial oxygenation. This is why mean airway pressure is important in pressure control. This is also why when you talk about APRV, you have a big increase in your mean airway pressure, and the same process happens, and it leads to better oxygenation. Okay, So that's your mean airway pressure answer. Now, when we talk about pressure control, we got to talk about this. we got to set PIP. We got to set eye time. We got to talk about what raw and compliance does to our results of mechanical ventilation. So when you give a patient, you put a patient in pressure control, what effect will raw have on PIP? What effect will compliance have on PIP? What effect will they have on eye time? Here's the answers. Increasing raw... equals decreasing tidal volumes. It doesn't change the PIP, and it doesn't change the eye time. All it does is change tidal volume. So if your airway resistance goes up, then your tidal volumes are going to go down. If your tidal volumes go down, your minute volume goes down. Okay? Okay. Now, on compliance side of things, if compliance goes down, then tidal volumes go down. Does not change eye time and does not change PIP. These are set, right? So these aren't going to change. But your resulting tidal volumes are going to change. And the exact opposite is true also. If raw goes down, then tidal volume goes up, okay? So let's do it like this. In pressure control, we have a set PIP and a set eye time. If raw goes down, decrease raw equals decrease tidal volume. An increase, I'm sorry, a decrease raw equals decrease tidal, increase tidal volumes. An increase in raw equals a decrease in your tidal volume. That's the change that's going to happen. If airway resistance goes up, tidal volume goes down. If tidal volume goes down, minute ventilation goes down. Why am I saying this so many times? Because it's important. Raw goes up, tidal volume goes down. Minute ventilation goes down. CO2 goes up, pH goes down. We now have an acidosis because of our problem. Patient has a lung problem and increasing airway resistance. We're talking about somebody with asthma. They are now hypoventilated because the raw went up. The tidal volume went down. The minute ventilation went down. The CO2 went up. pH went down. That's how you got to think about this stuff. On the flip side, if you have your status asthmaticus that comes in and is extremely shut down and then they start to open up, then guess what? Tidal volume goes up. 
And when tidal volume goes up, minute volume goes up. And when minute volume goes up, CO2 goes down. And when CO2 goes down, pH goes up. That's the train of thought. So you got to watch this. You got to make sure that when you have your status asthmaticus and their airway constriction or their bronchoconstriction improves, you're now not delivering tidal volumes that are too high because your patient can become alkalotic because you're giving too much volume now. Now, the exact opposite of this is true. If your compliance goes down, then your tidal volumes go down. This is somebody with a developing pneumonia or developing ARDS and their title and their compliance, their static compliance. We're just talking static compliance. There's no need to talk about dynamic compliance because that's wrapped up in the raw. That's wrapped up into our airway resistance. So our static compliance goes down. Our lungs become stiff. We're delivering a set pressure at a set eye time. Our tidal volumes will decrease. Our minute volume decreases. Our CO2 goes up, our pH goes down. Seeing where we're going. Then when the patient starts getting better, you have an increase in your compliance. And as the lungs get more compliant, you start delivering a greater amount of tidal volume, which you have to monitor because a greater amount of tidal volume leads to a greater amount of minute volume. CO2 goes down, pH goes up. Now, if your CO2 is already high and you're already acidotic and your patients start getting better, then maybe your CO2 is coming to normal and your pH is rising to normal. You just have to know where your patient is starting from. That's what all this comes down to. If you're, if you're normal with a, a terrible compliance and then they become more compliant, then you're going to go into a state of alkalosis. But if you have a terrible lung compliance and you're doing all you can to ventilate this patient, the tidal volumes are super small, and then you start noticing them trending upward, then you go, okay, good. This is good. This is, means that this high CO2 that we haven't been able to get down is going to start coming down, and my pH is going to start coming up. If you have them normalized here, then they're going to go alkalotic when the tidal volumes increase because the minute volume is going to increase. Shad Jamal, I hope this answers your questions. I hope you've subscribed already. And if you haven't, I hope you please do. And I hope anybody else watching this video sends a comment and hits the subscribe button. Best wishes.